Hi, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Fright Mike. Or if you're new here, hi, welcome. I'm Sam. I'm Liz. And we are beginning a new month. And you know what that means? New theme. You guessed it. And this month, I'm very excited, very jazzed. We are talking J-horror all month long. (laughs) J-horror. We really need to get a soundboard. (laughs) I know. I know. Because I'm sick of doing it with my mouth. (laughs) too lazy i know i'm excited uh jay horror is gonna be a lot of fun take some guesses at what's coming up so you may many even, good ones uh, so many good ones uh, you surprises. may guess for sure so yeah and uh today we are kicking it off i think in the best way possible with battle royale what a way to kick off jay horror incredible oh man battle royale from 2000 that i believe did not even get a u.s release until 2010 that's crazy yes so it was like like banned it wasn't a band or almost banned it depends on like i guess what article you read or who you listen to because um some people say that toei i don't know if i'm even saying that right t-o-e-i toei toei whatever um supposedly they banned it like they wouldn't sell it in the u.s because they were afraid of getting in trouble because this movie came out a year after columbine Mm. some articles that you read say there this was never banned in the u.s but there's rumors about why it didn't come to the u.s until 10 years later i don't know who to believe i don't know what to believe all I know is I'm glad that we have it and I'm yeah. glad that it's watchable now. For those of you who maybe haven't seen it, it is on Tubi for free. Please check it out. It's it's an incredible movie. It was so much fun. This, shockingly, was a first time watch for me. <laughs> that is That is quite shocking. I know. Like, I don't know how I had always known about this movie. I own this movie and I had never taking the time to watch it crazy and it was blasphemy and i'm afraid to say it was a lot of fun (laughs) given the subject matter but it was fun it's good it's like it um it tackles dark subject matter almost like lightheartedly and like comically at times like lighthearted but gory too yeah and heavy and sad but like it's tonally all over the place (laughs) yeah like the the training video that they watch yeah and the girl's like you're gonna be exp- you know your head's gonna explode don't go in these danger zones and she's like so cute and like dressed up yeah but she's talking about like oop if you try to take that necklace off boom your head's gonna pop off like yeah oh, okay you'll be given a weapon and to make things fair it's not always gonna be like a gun or an axe and like she picks up you know what is it like the the axe and she's like ooh, a good one like yeah okay well and and I think you had mentioned before we started recording that these kids are kids. Like, they're young. They're eighth graders. Eighth graders, which is insane. So, like, the fact that, like, the instructional video is so lighthearted. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, these kids are, like, faced with this whole thing about you need to all kill each other. Yeah. You know, like, the last one standing kind of thing. And, you know, you have these collars on your neck and they're going to explode if you have any funny business going on. Like insane it's crazy because like america or the u.s has the hunger game series which i mean how was it not influenced by this you know what i mean oh, like yeah. i don't know what who's the author of the hunger suzanne, suzanne collins. collins i don't know miss collins's uh <laughs> story behind her influence for the hunger games it feels very battle royale especially considering hunger games catching fire the arena is a clock with mm-hmm. danger zones yeah well and battle royale has some danger zones yeah like the hunger games was like the pg-13 version mm. of this movie well and, and the, my whole point is like i guess like the whole reason i brought it up you're absolutely correct pg-13 version but the kids are also older yeah you know it, yeah like there's actual adults that play the hunger games too yes this yeah like it's it's and sometimes it's little little kids like rue unfortunately yeah sometimes it's older kids you know but like most of them that we see in the movie are older Mm -hmm. you know 
um, this movie, they are eighth graders. Well, and they're not there. I mean, I guess in The Hunger Games, they're not really there willingly either. They're, but they are, like, there's a chance that they might not go. Like, they have a chance to not go, kind right. of. It's like, like a, a lottery it's system. It's a lottery system. Like, so there is a chance that when this happens, this lottery is drawn. Like, they don't have to go. Or, like, they, you know, they won't be chosen to go. Or someone will volunteer in their place. Right. Like, there's, like, that. But these kids are, like, drugged, and they wake up, and they're there. And there's, yeah. like, and they're barely given any time to really assess what's happened to them and also the fact that i i don't know if it's like made i mean I, like do they explain how long they've been doing this whole battle royale thing i know that they had said in the beginning of the movie that like basically the world's gone to shit yeah. the youths are like out of control and they're not respecting adults and that's why they're doing this and then they kind of flash to um like a helicopter coming in with like the last survivor this like little girl from like the previous battle royale yeah. but i don't know if that was like the, was that the first one i mean i would only i don't know the correct answer i can only assume that it is early on in the battle royale acts inception because when they are all awakened and they meet with katano their teacher to kind of explain like hey you like remember he he writes on the board and he says has anyone heard of this the battle royale act and everyone's like no and he's like mm, that's a shame because that's what's happening so like i guess it hasn't been r around long enough for the kids to know what's going on either that or they are just ignorant because yeah like they don't there's listen a whole to reason adults. <laughs> right like there's a whole reason this act was put in place to begin with mm -hmm. so i don't know and whereas it, like in the hunger games they know what's what it is right the year. reaping comes around every yeah year or however that's a, long that's you such know? a good name for it too. i oh, mean absolutely. so is battle royale but the reaping Ooh. now <laughs> speaking of the name battle royale and this movie not having a U.S. release until 2010. Uh, there's a movie called Accepted from 2006, I want to say. Mm -hmm. And it's a comedy. Justin Long. Justin Long. Mm -hmm. And one of the, So Justin Long's like rival in the movie, like the antagonist, Floyd Ambrose or whatever, or Troy Ambrose, whatever his name is. Um, he gets into a fight with Justin Long and they're like squaring up. And like the stoner of the movie, he goes battle royale as if they're gonna like fight mm -hmm. but this movie wasn't released in the u.s until four years after except it even came out so mm -hmm. i guess like in my mind is that just like a term i don't know i don't know and that's the thing like i feel like i just like um associate the two mm -hmm. because i can't even tell you i don't remember the first time i saw battle royale it was years ago um like the first time and when i like heard the title of the you know like when i was like oh battle royale about kids like killing each other i immediately thought of accepted it with the guy like battle royale and i was mm -hmm. like oh See, to me, i guess that's what he's like, referring to it sounds like a wrestling thing like royal rumble and i'm sure it <laughs> the is the battle royale cage match <laughs> yeah i'm sure it is i have no idea honestly i'm sure i mean i'm sure battle royale is like a common term but like it's just so funny that like mm -hmm. yeah. in my mind i'm like there i mean <laughs> if this movie was not available until 2010 then what are they talking about and accepted when there's clearly like a probably plausible answer for it yeah and yet in my mind you can't tell me that he wasn't referencing this he movie. was foreshadowing he was 100 percent <laughs> referencing this movie i guarantee you probably <laughs> i doubt it but <laughs> but still they're both students they're both mad at each other battle yeah. royale i don't know. fight to the death fight to the death yeah, this uh, but there's like a lot going on in this movie. Uh, in the way that like so much, it it's similar to Hunger Games or like Belco Experiment, where you all are forced to kill each other until there's one victor. There's some obviously sort of tracer on you, so they can keep track of who's alive. They make announcements as to like who's been killed or how Which is many another have been Hunger killed. Games thing. <laughs> Absolutely, and Belco too. Remember they're like, oh, that's right. In they two hours, at if the they, end. <laughs> yeah, 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 like in two hours, if forty, are, you know, twenty aren't dead, forty will die. You know, like, um, so it's it very much follows that formula, uh, but also I kind of like kind of similarly as well. We also fall into that trap of like, there's forty students in the class, mm -hmm. and we do see a lot of them die, but uh, just know that while we cover this episode, I didn't, I did not write down all 40 students names oh god no so 
uh, forgive me if I don't cover like, oh, and then this one gets like these two are hanged. These two commit suicide together. Like there's so much. There's that just happens. a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's a two hour movie and most of the two hours were in this arena, <laughs> this island arena. <laughs> yeah. Of so all this stuff happening. We're going to try to cover as much as we can uh, that has to do with the plot. Mm hmm. Um, and I hate to say that, like, kids dying doesn't deal with the plot because that is the plot. But it's like, eh, two kids jump off a cliff. I'm not going to make me- – and then they jump off the cliff. And then these two – it's like it's too much. Yeah. Well, it's too much. Also, like, I think what makes this movie so interesting and good, you know, as opposed to, like, m- movies like – you know, I guess – I think what made The Hunger Games so good is, like, the backstory. Like, the characters. Like, we know – The close relationships they right, form like in the re- – they yeah. have it. And this movie, I think, is similar in that it's not – I mean, it is a blood fest, and it's – like we said, tonally all over the place because it's kind of like there's humor in it, even yeah. if it doesn't mean to be. Um, but even though we are only with each of like the most of the 40 students for a very brief time, it's like we're given enough of them to care with like the ones that we do spend time with. I guess. Yes. Like, yes, we get. And, and I guess also, too, it's the fact that they are so young that we're like, oh, <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. Like, but we do get, like, actual backstories on a few of them, mm-hmm. and that's interesting. And it kind of, like, goes to show you, like, why they are the way they are, like, how they're put into the situation and why they are acting like this. Right. And, can, like, I think especially um, – maybe I'm looking too much into it, but, like, it almost shows the fragility of connections when you are so young. Like, in, in eighth grade, if I were dropped – into an arena in this situation with my eighth grade class the amount of people that i would have like killed for the dumbest reason (laughs) like remember that time you fucking you know you made fun of my pants like Mm -hmm. you know like and like everyone's starting to develop crushes and be like start to feel more like adult and these hormones and like the paranoia and the excitement like it's Everything is so heightened. Everything is so... Well, as you said, it's developing. Yes. Like, the brain, the frontal cortex is still marinating. Like, we're not there. Like, nobody is there. And and everybody has a different circumstance. You know, the backstory of why they're there. You know, like, the whole thing. So, they are going to be different in the situation where some people will curl up and die and like not want to do anything and then others are like like let's fucking go right and it's how crazy it is that they are so different yet they're all friends like they're all classmates and how fast they turn on each other you know like the we see those two girls that like they get their backpacks near the same time and they're like we'll always be friends and the other one's like totally and then it shows that they killed each other yeah (laughs) So it just goes to show at this age, these hoes ain't loyal. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. That'd be Tensions a tough situation to be in. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Especially because a lot of them seem like they were so close too. I know. They I had, know. Like, you know. Well, it's like when you mm. spend so much time with, with the same people. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to believe, but it's like, it's the sad part of you want to trust so badly that they won't hurt you and yet at the same time you also don't want to die yeah and you can definitely tell that some of these kids were born to do this (laughs) amen like the transfer student the one transfer student the transfer student that girl Mm -hmm. the one that has like the the traumatic oh mitsuko mitsuko yeah Mm -hmm. is that her name i think so yeah mitsuko yeah she she was born to do this she was like ready (laughs) amen she knew from day one she was cleaning her gun the second she got it Mm -hmm. (laughs) she woke up in that classroom and saw battle royale and she said oh thank god perfect about damn time i've been chosen for the right activity i'm surprised she wasn't the one that volunteered (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm yeah we have so like the um Basically, the movie. Oh, I guess should we do scores first before we like really yeah. get into it? Okay. So, Battle Royale, seven point five out of ten on IMDb, ninety percent Rotten Tomatoes. This is also, let's just say, um, if anyone cares, this is one of Quentin Tarantino's like favorite movies, and one of the um, the actresses who plays uh, Chigusa, Chigusa, I think, is her name in this. She um, because Quentin Tarantino is such a big fan of this movie. This actress went on to play Gogo. In Love Kill it. Bill Volume 1. Love it. Yes. So that's fun. Um, 
But yeah, so the movie opens up with kind of like a like informational dump where like the state of the nation is just like in Shambles. total shit. 800,000 students. They don't like believe in going to school anymore and so like these adults in order to keep the kids under control because they're so terrified of them they um put into effect the millennium education reform act or the battle royale act so basically pitting kids against each other in a battle to the death and so we kind of in the beginning of the movie see a sort of backstory so we're introduced to our main character shuya nanahara in my notes, I call him both names repeatedly. So <laughs> Interchangeable. Yes. Well, they do that a lot in this movie. Yeah. They'll, they'll call people. I think that's why I was getting confused because not only are there 40 of them, well, 40 plus because there's other people, mm-hmm. but they sometimes refer to them by their first name and sometimes by their last name. And I'm like, wait, who? Right. Yes. <laughs> I, thought, like, I thought that's what her with name was. Like, that was her first name. Right. Oh, so confused. You're so, like, why are they calling him Nanahara? I thought they called yeah. him Shuya. Yeah. So confused. And so, same thing with, like, uh, what's his name? Nobu, the friend. And yeah. He's got, like, a longer. Yeah. Yeah. So they all have, like, nicknames for each other. And sometimes, like, um, Noriko, at first, when she calls him Shuya, she's like, oh, I'm sorry. That's what Nobu used to call you. And she kind of, like, switches off between the two. Yeah. So if you hear me say shuya or nanahara it's the same it's our main protagonist i would say yeah and he basically talks about how he discussed like his mom left and his dad committed suicide by hanging and so he went to live in like a a foster home but he just kind of like felt lost um as a child he ended up being in the same foster home as nobu which is his friend and that's how they got close um and nobu we see has attacked his seventh grade teacher by like slicing his butt cheek almost his mm-hmm. leg yeah with a butterfly knife and uh he runs away and we see noriko who nobu has a crush on she picks up the knife and like keeps it she was the only one that attended class that day <laughs> it's true and the teacher we come to find like has like a an emotional not I would say maybe not in, like, such a creepy way, like, an emotional attachment to her, Mm -hmm. almost like a daughter figure. Yeah, because, like, later on in the movie, we found out that he, his daughter is not, like, hates him. Yeah. Not involved. Doesn't want anything to do with him. Yeah. And so that's why he had grown, like, such an attachment to this girl, because she's, like, the only one that... She, like, comes to his class. Yeah, like, respected him. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So, um... That was in seventh grade for this class. And one year later, the events of this movie take place when they're all in eighth grade. They are on a bus for a quote unquote field trip, which ends up like resulting in them getting gassed. Yeah. And then brought to an island. Mm hmm. Yeah, they're basically, like, they wake up one by one in this room that looks like a classroom. I love that somebody put, like, saran wrap on the floor. I know. <laughs> it reminds me of, like, the what we do in the shadows newspaper. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because, like, they're going in expecting that someone's probably going to die in this room at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're just they don't want to clean up, some- man. <laughs> <laughs> the precautions. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so these kids wake up. They're all, like, disoriented. And they roll in the TV with the, uh, the instructional video. But the teacher is their seventh grade teacher from last year, the one that they disrespected so bad. Mm -hmm. And he's like, listen, you're all you've all been chosen for this. And your parents just heard about it right now. (laughs) Right. Your parents are aware about it now. Yeah. I would love to because they're like, what the hell are you doing here? Like, where's our eighth grade teacher? And he's like, oh, yeah, he was also notified that you guys were chosen for this. He doesn't agree with the Battle Royale Act, though. So here's his body. And they, yeah, they wheel, wheel him in. in. Yes. And his eyes are like gouged out. And he just looks like, man, he went through some torture. Bummer. Yeah. So the kids are like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, they're serious. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I love I love the instructional video. He says he tells everyone to quiet, pay attention, watch the video. Everybody, let's let's chill and hang out. And he tells them like not to talk or whisper or whatever. He gives one kid a warning, and then when he says, "I," you know, like they hear him whispering again. He says, "I said no whispering," and throws a knife a knife into the forehead of a young woman. <laughs> That's brutal. Yeah. So they're all terrified now. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm yeah i think he does he not kill another kid in this in the classroom as well he or does. He, yeah he will, right yeah no yeah that's right yes he, ex- he, he he 
puts the uh he explains, explains about the that. collars that they can't they have these like tracking collars on them and that they can't take them off and that if they try anything funny they're gonna explode and they're they can like track them with them so they always know where they are and if they're trying to do something you know they'll go off and then they basically said like by the end of it if there's still like you know like five people left by the end of the the three day event then they're just gonna blow everybody up right like if they can't come down to one victor then Mm -hmm. everybody dies and there's no winner yeah and they have 72 hours brutal damn (laughs) yeah that sucks that's a lot of information to take in in the span of like i don't know yeah a half hour (laughs) that they're in this room this cute girl on the instructional video she's like telling out all of them they'll be given a backpack with like food and water and like a weapon a map um i think a compass or flashlight something like you know basically like survival weapons and she tells them that the girls may need something extra for like the time of the month so like they're allowed to take their stuff Mm -hmm. um incredible very very kind very thoughtful (laughs) um and yeah like nobu is basically kind of like mouthing off and um, just to demonstrate how the collars work appropriately, he does trigger Nobu's and he explodes. Well, his neck does. It's brutal, too, because he's, like, sad. trying to get everyone to help him and nobody wants, like, obviously, you're standing too close to him, like, you're going to blow up, too. So they're, like, pushing him away. Yeah. Ugh. So sad. And, like, Nanahara just watches his friend die. Mm-hmm. And it's so sad. And I think... At some point, like, a gun goes off because I think that's how Noriko's arm gets shot. Yeah. Because she's wounded. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically, the video then says, oh, and then um, Kitano, before they all get their ration bags, he says, oh, yeah, like, you guys are all going to have to kill each other. In addition to these two extra special students, uh, they're transfer students. So there's, um, oh, my God, hold on. Kawada and the psycho one who i find really hot kiriyama (laughs) i don't know what it is man kiriyama does it for me it's the psycho it's the psycho behavior i think it's it's the way that the pants hang off the hips it's the it's honestly it's the attitude he's real smooth this this whole time wolf yeah like honestly he knows what's up he he knows what he's doing yeah oh yeah He knows what he's doing to me. That's for damn sure. And, that's, and, he's, and he's the one that they that volunteers, right? They, they find Kiriyama. Out, they find out later that he volunteered to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He heard about this battle. He had some said, steam yup. to blow off. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure fucking did. Sure did. Oh. So then one by one, they are called roll call style um, boy, girl to receive their bags and run off into the arena. And like almost immediately shit's going crazy there's a kid with a crossbow yeah uh like i mean it's insane and kids start like committing suicide because they don't want to play so like two kids are hanging like i said earlier two kids decide to commit suicide together by jumping off a cliff um it's like it gets insane um so like nanahara and noriko they find each other and they go running off and he kind of tries to like dress her arm wound and he kind of explains to her that like nobu had a crush on her so he's going to help her and protect her for nobu because he obviously can't yeah and so they form like a little team yeah but it's it's crazy because i feel like even though you know like they're teaming up me as like a first time viewer i'm like all right when is the double cross going to happen here? Because obviously there can only be one. Right, exactly. And, like, that happens a few times in this movie where it's, like, people turn on each other at the last minute. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. So it's like, oh. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting. I was waiting. Mm-hmm. But I, I think it's cute, too, because, like, Noriko and Nanahara are like, we're in this together. Let's check what we have to defend ourselves. And Noriko's weapon are a pair of binoculars. And nanahara's weapon is a pot lid yeah Incredible. hey that comes in handy though because when they're getting shot at like he uses that as like a shield oh yeah so i mean it's not bad right could be worse could be nothing i feel like you could like cut somebody's head off with it you know like yeah. power stomp like ba- uh, bash them in the head to knock them out mm-hmm. gain the advantage absolutely it's not an ideal weapon but it's something yeah it's better than nothing 
it's pretty brutal like all the people that commit suicide because they're like i'm not playing this game like they're standing for like one last thing like i'm not gonna mess around with this game like i'm not playing and then like ugh, like to have to make that decision i know ugh, especially because they're kids i know and like the ones that are like we're not doing this uh, like everybody, let's band together. Oh, they I get know. picked off so easily because they're loud. Yeah, you gotta be like a little mouse and hide exactly. under a rock. Right, you wait gotta, for like... all this to blow over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, I know. So like, um, and he and they were ready. Like Shu, oh uh, yeah, Shuya and Noriko, they were like ready to go. Like those girls that are on the rocks, yeah, are, like yeah, waving yeah. them down, and they were gonna go join them. They're gonna be like, let's do this. And then the whole time he is like trying to find the nerdy kids that are like trying, because they like took it to the whole like, hey, fuck this, we're gonna go hack into the system. <laughs> Amen. I love those guys. Me too. Me too. And they're making homemade bombs. Yeah, the one kid's like my uh, what is this? Like his grandpa, his uncle was in the military, and he knew how to make bombs. And he brings a book called like The Ticking Clock, which is all about bombs. And he figures out it's the, one of those kids, because um, there's like several kind of groups. There's like Nanahara and Noriko. They eventually join forces with um, the other kid, the transfer kid Kawada, um, and like throughout they kind of like meet with different factions of students and kind of like get a little bit of help along the way from each one of them yeah um but the like there's a group like immediately night one uh before we even see these military kids that tr- like this is how we know that kiriyama is super dangerous because there's a group of like seven or eight kids students that circle him and they're like what up transfer kid like what do you know you're a spy like they fully do not trust him and they're right not to but they think he knows something like that he was put in here by the government Mm -hmm. and the one kid has like an uzi or some kind of like fully automatic weapon and kiriyama just basically manhandles him uses that kid and his gun to shoot down all the other students takes their shit and heads out so you're like immediately you're like oh look out for this kid it's brutal yeah he's bad um but then on the other hand when shuya and no uh yeah shuya uh, shuya slash nanahara and nariko they run into kawada because uh nanahara gets into like a scuffle with mm-hmm. this other kid yeah and he accidentally like axes him in the head <laughs> that happens a couple times too <laughs> yeah the axe in the head Ugh. and, and the, he's still walking around I he's know. like i'm okay uh, yeah i'm okay like, sorry sorry <laughs> That's so sad. It's but flesh food. <laughs> exactly. He's like, what were we talking about before? Yeah. Um, but like Kawada sees them and he like shoots the the one kid, uh, but he lets Shuya and Nariko kind of go. And he's like, hey, man, like the only way out of this game is like kill yourself, dude. Kill yourself or like buck up. Yeah. But he lets them live. So you're like, oh, this kid is showing a little bit of mercy here. And they're on a team now. <laughs> yeah, right. They kind of like. They band together. Right. They, they form a little bond because later on when Noriko succumbs kind of like to her arm wound, um, Nanahara's like, oh, there's a, a clinic on the island. I'll take you there. And that's where Kawada is kind of like holding up. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, oh, pot lid and binoculars. Like, I, I remember you guys. Like, He's got a whole set up there. He sure does. And like, for he's a while, got a kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And everybody like all these kids know how to cook yeah i love that well also the fact that he like they're trying to be like on the down low and he's like cooking like people would smell that right like mm-hmm. they would come run <laughs> yeah i mean they it? do eventually get caught but like yeah i don't know well, like, he's got like candles lit yeah he's playing like you know saxophone music <laughs> yeah, right. he's chilling yeah so it's like his bachelor pad <laughs> yeah yeah of course uh yeah so like this scene is where um we find like a a little more like information and backstory that uh kawada he said it's funny like he says his dad is a doctor because nanahara is questioning how he knows how to like take care of noriko and he's like oh my dad was a doctor later on in the movie when they're on the boat he's like oh my dad was a a sail you know like a fisherman or whatever when he's cooking he's yeah. like my dad was a chef <laughs> yes exactly so um you know he's like oh that's nice and uh we find out that kawada has played the game before that he was a winner and they were asking him like so how did it all like go down man and he said that he was in there with his like love interest girlfriend whatever and they made it until the end 
but he's like you can you can never trust anybody in here because their um necklaces were about to go off and this hooker stabbed him yeah <laughs> I can, like there can I only mean, be one man <laughs> there can only be one these hoes ain't loyal nope but so he's like oh oh that's how it's gonna be ho and he kills her but the crazy thing is is that so he's already been in this before and he's like yeah they put me back in so like even if you make it out there's a chance that you can get thrown back in and that's terrifying mm-hmm. i mean at least he he's useful because he knows like the lay of the land basically yeah 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 um, so he has like that advantage, but like to survive the trauma of that and be thrown back in. Whew, well, no, that was brutal. And I think that's to so like at least with and I I'm not gonna keep making comparisons between like the Hunger Games and Battle Royale because that's stupid. I will, but I will, <laughs> like, but I will say like I guess one thing that like Catching Fire did that maybe this could have been like Battle Royale like the government is dumb is that like. In Battle Royale, they keep using the same island. Yeah. So the fact that they brought Kawada back. Yeah. He knows the island. He knows what's on the island. He knows how this shit works. It's easier to corrupt the system, as we see in this movie, than it is for, like, let's say, a Hunger Games catching fire. Mm-hmm. When they're like, ooh, we really want to kill this bitch, but we can't draw her again because she's a victor. Yeah. So let's change the rule mm-hmm. and we'll put their ass back in there. But every time the arena is different right so like not only can they change the rules to like draft these victors now but they're giving them a completely different setup Mm -hmm. so like cat like i guess like katniss doesn't understand that like it is still corruptible it's just harder to do so and there's like forces at work that are like doing it and Um, with that it's like a whole spectacle like it's a show it's like a it's a thing like holy like they're in costume and like there's a storyline right this is just like we're gonna teach these kids a lesson yeah on respect by you know only the fittest survive or whatever but we're gonna drop them on an island that yeah is uh, like in in catching fire it's or like in the hunger games like it's all enclosed to yeah, like so a like, dome right so like they they can't just like swim off into infinity yeah this island we're led to believe yes you can you can escape at any time if you figure out how to like turn off your collar yeah right you can hack the system if you figure it out these kids make bombs because on this island they find things like sulfur and <laughs> kerosene and like you know what pesticides and like whatever the fuck else they're making these bombs what on. were they gonna do with the bomb though i know that they blew they like like blow blew it up at the end yeah. but like what were they gonna do with it i don't know maybe like drive it to the military because there's military on the island too to like yeah. i think they oh it's like heavily guarded <laughs> yeah so like maybe the intention was to like blow i you know what i, I don't, don't really know it, it's just interesting because it's like there's the one kid who's like hacking the system the whole time and then he sends the other guys out to get all the stuff to make these bombs and in the end they like do end up blowing up the bomb eventually but mm-hmm. like and they put it, it's, like, in a car, I guess. Yeah. Like, one of the military cars. Yeah, it's, like, a truck that they stole to move, like, all the, the pesticides and the yeah. whatever. But I'm just, like, wondering what they were going to do with, like, the one bomb. Unless they were going to, like, just throw it in the building. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they were going to blow it up as a distraction. Maybe. And then gun down the military people when they go to investigate. Don't I don't really know. Yeah. Blow up a bunch of students. It seems like that's really not like they were going to take down the system to save the students. So I'm not really sure. I think their main goal was just to hack in, which they did successfully do. <laughs> they did. Although I am still confused at the end. This like I've seen this movie, I think three times. Ta- it's like my third or fourth viewing on the movie. And I'm still confused. These kids are the ones that hacked it. Right. Yeah. And Kata- uh, what's his name? Katano. Oh. At the end, he's like, oh, you were the one to hack it, weren't you? I don't think so. Is that his paranoia because the kid's been in there before? I think so. I Oh, I forgot about that. He's talking about Kawhi. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. He's like, yeah. oh, you were the one to corrupt the system. I don't know because don't the kid so. was hard at work really doing some shit on yeah, that computer. Yeah, they were up on those computers. All Yeah. So, I mean, like, I feel like it was him that did it. And the second so. that he did it, it, like, went down. Yeah. Like, he hit the button. Yeah. And then it went down, like... And we didn't, I mean, we didn't see Kawada, so, like... Right, because he was with Nanahara and Right, Mariko. so, like, what, what did, how would he have been able to hack it? Right. 
Yeah, I don't... It's weird. I don't know. I think it's like a misunderstanding on the teacher's part. Probably. But I still don't want to sound dumb, so... I mean, in a way, he hacked the rules of by the end. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in that way, not the actual system. Mm-hmm. He just did a fake out. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know. It's still cool. Yeah. Still cheated the system. enjoy the podcast like what you hear and you want to hear more well you're in luck we have a patreon that's right if you don't know we talk about new movies on our patreon we do monthly rewinds so that way you can find out what we are watching between our main episodes sometimes we craft spooky cocktails to match our theme of the month and watch parties galore so much fun over there head over to patreon.com slash fright podcast to check that out again if you want to hang out with us a little bit more then support us over on patreon.com slash fright podcast and we'll love you forever okay bye which is pretty cool absolutely yeah so after uh yeah after um what's his face um after like uh kiri what's his name kiriyama kiriyama yeah he takes out all the weapons we also see our next big threat of the movie in um mitsuko Oh my god sorry. oh man so this is the girl she is the one that was like born to do this she is like taking shit from nobody she's gunning down everybody she's playing a victim and then like oh yep. backstabbing and you know she's evil straight off the bat because the first victim uh the, or the first person to get killed by um mitsuko is megumi and she's just like straight up looking at photos of like the classmate that she thinks is like cute she's hanging out uh, and the door opens to where she's hiding out. And um, Mitsuko is standing in the doorway. And Megumi's like, who's there? She puts that flashlight under her face to make, like, that fucking ghoulish <laughs> little... And she smiles. And she... I mean, the bitch looks so evil. So evil. Something out of, like, nightmare. Like, it's nightmare fuel. Well, even even more so than that is the fact that she has her period. <laughs> Because remember, oh, Mitsuko, yeah. they say like, oh, you know, you bring your tampons. Yeah, we, I saw your tampon. Like, I knew you were, you know, here. Mm-hmm. And so that's even more of like, she's got the rage going on. Oh, exactly. <laughs> she's PMS and hard. Poor Megumi's like, oh, come on in. Like, you know, I know our friend group didn't really get along, but like, I don't have beef with you. And Megumi's so nice. And too nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, because Mitsuko's like, she oh. made the mistake, man. She, she put her back against her yep yeah she's like oh did you uh oh is this this taser is this your weapon that's so cute you know if someone had a heart problem they'd go down like with one zap and poor megumi's like have you used one of those before she's like "Mm, no definitely Mm. psycho Mm -hmm. because then megumi she's like here's my weapon and it's a sickle and she slices her throat stays the night in megumi's house which later on megumi's friend notices because she's like i went to megumi's place and uh it's just interesting because it looked like someone stayed the night and there was a tampon in the toilet and i know megumi didn't have her period i checked first of all weird (laughs) first of all weird yeah okay (laughs) interesting (laughs) tactic (laughs) right second of all like i mean i don't even know like it's just the whole thing's fucking crazy Mm -hmm. but yeah so like that's kind of setting up the fact that mitsuko is also a psycho so you have two like bloodthirsty bitches yeah humans on a rampage running around Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh man my favorite kill though and this is just great this is like just out of like sheer pettiness is the girl who gets like she's in the the yellow tracksuit? Yeah. Oh, they, that's Go Go. She from so Kill Bill. I, think I don't know what her name is in this movie. Uh, Chigusa. She. So the Chigusa? the guy, the creepy guy, that's yeah, yeah, like yeah. following her around. Who's like you know like oh we're all alone out here like you know we're gonna die soon like let's aren't you, you know, a virgin Do yeah you die a virgin creeping so hard on her and she is like not having any of his shit. She's just fucking like she's like you were bad mouthing me to all like your friends and blah 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 and just axes him in the nuts. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, because he's like <laughs> I don't know. He's basically like suck my dick, blah, 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 blah. you know, like let's have sex. And the way that she mo- like straight up mocks him to the point where he's so irritated. She's like, oh yeah, you wanna like 
she, in maybe not in these exact words but she's like oh you gonna fuck me with your little two inch weenie oh you think so like <laughs> people happened? like kim people are dying you know like yeah don't you like all you can think about is like getting your dick wet at a time like this when we are literally forced to kill each other yeah oh yeah she gets i mean like right in the penis she was so unbothered Cuts up until that moment off. yeah she, she was just, just she's jogging he was giving her shit he's like yeah why you're gonna start training while we're here it's completely unbothered and he's the one that came up and just started bothering her right harassing her like i'm oh, sorry man. sir the hustle doesn't stop he gets it real good absolutely but then i feel bad because then uh shigusa she doesn't last very much longer no. because mitsuko the psychopath is close by and watching and she starts because she's acquired a gun by the way somewhere along the line mitsuko even more acquires dangerous. a gun <laughs> right and so she starts shooting at Shigusa, who then, like, runs away because she's a runner. Unfortunately, however, she does get shot. And she ends up, like, dying with her, like, I guess it's, like, her crush or, like, I don't know, love interest or whatever, Hiroki. They, like, he's, like, she's, like, hey, man, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really bleeding a lot here. Can you prop me up? <laughs> and, uh. Yeah, it's just like it's sad because she's like, "You look really cool," and he's like, "You do too." She's like, "Man, thanks." You know, (laughs) dies. Sad. So sad. sad. Oh man. But that kid that comes out with the bulletproof vest. Now that is something that you want. (laughs) You definitely. Oh my god. It's like the next scene. The psycho guy is like going after this kid, but he's got a bulletproof vest on because he's shooting him up. And you think, "Oh my god!" Kid stands up. Lo and behold, he's wearing a bulletproof vest. Well, and also this idiot and he said yeah he's an idiot huh? yeah because he made too much noise play dead man play yeah. dead play dead stay down stay down my dude because the, like this kid's running around outside near the clinic where um nanahara noriko and kawada are holed up and so like they hear all the commotion they're like if we just shut the fuck up maybe they won't come in and kiriyama guns down the kid with the bulletproof vest and thinks he's dead and then this idiot total idiot he's like yeah woo i survived yeah, he's like, thank god for this bulletproof vest what an idiot well yeah well he sees you he's watching you because you're loud as fuck and you're ignorant and you're dumb and so the kid gets it oh, oh man so does good. he get it the head grenade <laughs> yup oh. because then so now like the now psycho- kiriyama has the bulletproof yeah. vest so well he so psycho oh. dude what's his name kiriyama kiriyama Kiriyama. i'm I'm just referring to this (laughs) he's psycho guy he he now knows that they're inside in the clinic so he's like i gotta get in but because the door is locked and everything is like you know whatever he can't get in so he busts through the window using the bulletproof vest kid's head with a grenade in his mouth yeah incredible it's so cr- oh my god it's so crazy and like right before i feel like this- that is such a quentin tarantino thing <laughs> oh for sure like he had to have done that in his movies that's at some a kill point. bill thing if i've ever seen it oh you my know? god i like i'm sure tarantino watched this and was like oh, yes <laughs> i know what my next film is it's, and it's kill bill <laughs> can already see it oh, playing yeah. out in my head he started writing it immediately um yeah well then so here um the the trio gets split up and kawada marks um nanahara's map and he's like hey if we get separated let's meet at the shrine okay everybody agree and so because um kiriyama is a psycho and he's like trying to get in and he's throwing bombs and shit nanahara decides to be brave despite kawada's warnings not to and he runs out and um like leads kiriyama away from the clinic so the other two can escape and I mean, he's, like, running after Nanahara, just, like, blindly, like, shooting with this, like, infinite, like, it makes it seem like his, he's got, like, an infinite ammo oh, yeah. car, you know, cartridge, and so eventually they come to, like, a shoreline, and um, Nanahara shoots Kiriyama while he's reloading his fully automatic weapon. And he laughs because he's got the fucking bulletproof vest on. But just before he can kill Nanahara, another student who is close by is like, run, dude, and like distracts him. Mm. And they both end up like jumping into the water. So Kiriyama gets like a couple shots off. um, And you don't know at the moment if both students have lived or died, which is like, I mean, you know, Nanahara is going to live. 
Oh, I feel like you know that, right? And by this point, there's only like six, like sixteen kids left. I think. Yeah, they go quickly because they all go quick. Again, like between like the kills that we are seeing, we get like a daily report um, every six hours. So mm-hmm. at noon and six a.m. p.m., we are given like a like what zones are going to be dangerous from what time, and these are the boys and girls who are killed. So like even throughout the movie, when there's not like an update announced, we see like you know so and so dead and like these boys and these girls dead so like 20 to go 16 to go and they're doing it as if we're watching yeah like which is, which is cool. like they flash the name of the student and their number mm-hmm. like as if we're watching it on tv mm-hmm. or something it's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> amazing but uh we do find that nanahara is alive and maybe not well but yeah, he's bandaged he's surviving in a lighthouse full of girls the cheerleading squad the cheerleading squad <laughs> who are so chipper and they honestly have like the best little setup because they got like a full like kitchen and a full like they're like a working well-oiled machine in there yeah yeah they got first of all they got a lookout they so they got high table. ground and logo i know it's so cute <laughs> uh but so when um nana nanahara awakes he is met with um utsumi i sound so stupid saying these names i thought it was uh, yuki wasn't her name yuki uh, no yuki's the one who poisons him oh yeah or, or attempts to yeah but utsumi is the one who's there like hi oh, good morning okay. I, I thought she you. was the one okay. no yeah she's the one she's like i put those bandages on you it was the first time i ever touched a man uh, like a male's <laughs> body <laughs> like it she's so ooh. chipper for she like is. given the circumstances like they're in a really good mood over there and i love that she's given him like the full news report yeah she's like you've been knocked out for a while these are the people who've died <laughs> like oh okay status report because of course he asks and he's like oh where are these people and she's like oh they weren't announced so yeah. I, think, I think you're good mm-hmm. um but she's like yeah it's a lighthouse full of girls unfortunately i am gonna have to lock you in here because they don't trust you but oh especially because yeah she's like yeah especially because yuki's here and she's under the impression that you did kill her friend because she saw you and he's like no it was an accident she's like yeah man whatever (laughs) cool cool it's cool we just gotta keep you locked up like a caged animal i get you and yeah yuki she's like having like she's got that distant look in her eye like this i wish a motherfucker would yeah and she's got a bottle of poison and so she decides she's gonna she's gonna be the one to deliver Nanahara his food. And she's going to slip some poison in there. But like all solid plans that go awry. With a house full of hungry bitches. Somebody comes and scoops up the soup. Like ma'am if you're going to poison it. Do it like outside the door. Yeah. She does it in a room full of people. And she's like looking over her shoulder like. Ooh, and ooh. she doesn't say anything. Yeah. That girl she's just gro- like. She's like oh. Oh. Okay, yep. and then just watches her consume it. Stupid. And she Idiot. starts bleeding out the eyes. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, the girl who eats the poison soup. Oh, man. Spe- like, just blah. But, like... Blood everywhere. So, like, it's amazing because <laughs> one small accident literally kills the All entire lighthouse full of girls. It is insane how it, it works out. The paranoia takes over so fast. The gun. This is another Tarantino thing. This ha- Like... I, you can tell <laughs> you can yeah. tell he was inspired because like there's like a gunfight that goes really bad and they all end up shooting each other yeah but it's almost comical because like they shoot each other like a million times I, honestly it's like everybody that gets shot in this movie a million times and yet sometimes they still move <laughs> uh-huh like they're, they're like still crawling around sometimes they're getting up and walking around yep it's wild and, like, the one girl's like, I thought I'd make it until at least tomorrow dies. The other one's like, why would you fuck this up for all of us? We all could have lived. And then, like, immediately dies. Like, yeah. everyone shot, like, 800 times. At the end, <laughs> the only people in this lighthouse that are left alive are uh, Nanahara, who's locked upstairs, and Yuki. But she goes and lets them out. She, well, which is nice because she um, she's the one who fucked this all up by distributing the poison and not saying anything and so she lets nanahara out and she's like sorry man my bad and then she jumps off the lighthouse brutal 
Shit. I just love when he goes down into the kitchen. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Damn, breakfast must have sucked. <laughs> it wasn't the oatmeal. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, shit. Um, but so he's like severely injured and he's going to hobble his ass to that shrine. Yeah. He's like dedicated. Their meeting spot. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's like all kinds of shit going on. Um, like other kids are gunning other kids down. Um, Noriko is hiding out and she like it's raining and for whatever reason she gets like this wild hair up her ass where she's like I'm gonna I go. have to go right now yes and uh Kawada who's like with her he's like you idiot we're like it we're near a danger zone like where the f do you think you're going especially like without a map and in these like in this weather um so she's running runs into Mitsuko the dangerous evil ho like weapon collecting ho and she's like, oh, you have two men that's, that are protecting you? Wow, what a princess. <laughs> Goes to kill her, but then is spooked off because who enters the chat? The fucking teacher. Yeah, he just like randomly shows up. Yeah, with an umbrella. Like, why? Because he loves Noriko. Yeah, but he, why now? Is, is, oh, I guess it's like the first time she's been a, away from everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Which is interesting, too, because like for the most part, when we see Kitano... He's up in, like, the military base. Yeah, and, like, wh- if you... If he cared about her so much, then why did he ever there? Well, I feel like you got to take the Everybody. whole class, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. And give her a, be- a better advantage, I guess? I would have, like, maybe... Well, like... Yeah, I guess I don't... I, I maybe would have given her a bag with, like, a, a weapon. That bulletproof vest in it. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. But I guess... I guess I don't know how much control he has versus, like, the government. I think he's just there... Yeah. It's like the T. I don't know. He's the host. <laughs> right. Exactly. He's the host. Um, But he shows up and he gives her an umbrella after she runs over because he's like, oh, I see Nanahara has arrived. And we see him like hobbling his ass over, which then he collapses. He's so dramatic. Really dramatic. <laughs> he's like, I am weak as shit, but I have a ton of weapons. <laughs> and she's like, why do you have so many weapons? He's like, because I'm weak. <laughs> Hello. Hey, I mean, at least he had a plan. <laughs> right. He says, I don't have much money, but if I did, I'd build us a house where we both could live. Oh, It's from Moulin Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. The, yeah, so Kitano hands her the umbrella and then he just leaves. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. All right. He's just checking in. Right. He's like, anyway, good luck, champ. I feel like that was like a way of being like, I got you. <laughs> Right? I got one eye on you, babe. Like, I got you. And she has a dream about him, too. Mm-hmm. Um, Noriko has know. a I don't, dream. I, don't, I feel like the whole thing is weird. I don't know. Like It's real weird. Especially, like, at the end of the movie when they kind of show the elongated dream. And, like, so the dream she has is that um, Noriko and Katana are, Katana are sitting along, like, a, I don't know, like, a bank, it looks like. Along, like, a riverside, something. And they're eating, like, an ice cream bar. And, um, like, the elongated version of the dream essentially is, you know, her saying, like, oh, you know that butterfly knife that Nobu stabbed you with? Well, like, I picked it up and I didn't know what to do with it. So I've kept it in my desk at home um, ever since. So, like, this will be our secret. And so he looks at her in a way and he says to her, what is an adult supposed to say to to a child in this situation Mm -hmm. and then like the dream ends which that's like the elongated version of the dream yeah so like i think he does have conflicting feelings i don't know i'd like to believe that maybe they're not as creepy as like he wants to like have sex with her yeah and like maybe he really does just like care for her as a daughter i don't know Mm -hmm. i don't know well maybe i mean the whole thing is like about growing up and yeah in this world the kids are not respecting the adults and there's conflict everywhere and it's like they've the adults have lost control Mm -hmm. and so now it's kind of like we were the wise ones that were supposed to teach you and now you're you know you're breaking the chain of like how things are going and so now we don't know what the right thing to do is anymore right right i mean i don't know I don't know. There's definitely, like, a bigger message. (laughs) Definitely. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I think that conversation that he has with her is a little, like, double-sided. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I don't want to... Yeah, like, I don't know what the right thing to do is anymore. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, I don't I'm at I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, because <laughs> he does say, like, in that conversation, too, he's like, yeah, you know, like, uh, a teacher can't even, like, defend themselves when they get stabbed. So, like, I don't really know, like, what I'm supposed to say here. Yeah. You know, especially when she's like, it'll be our secret. And she really is, she's like an eighth grade girl and i he does have a complicated relationship with his daughter Mm -hmm. so like i don't i don't know i i still don't know how to take that convert that like that comment like what is an adult supposed to say to a child like yes the state of the world is fucked and like children don't respect adults he doesn't have any words of comfort left right but also it's like maybe he's like what do i say here to not sound inappropriate yeah you know true so either way she gets reunited with Shuya. Yeah. Very cute. Meanwhile, somewhere else in the arena, <laughs> we see um, Mitsuko. It's like it's like a whole um, event. So Mitsuko is finally gunned down by Kiriyama after Mitsuka kills another student who accidentally killed another student like it's a so chain of cr- events <laughs> yes it's like four kids de- like dead yeah. right one two th- yeah three i guess three kids dead yeah because it's the girl who runs who shoots the guy who ends up like confessing his love to her in his like dying breaths and she's like oh dang yeah shit yeah and then she gets killed by uh mitsuko who's like uh you know life's not fair ain't nobody coming to save you that really sucks toots and then immediately get shot kiriyama's like up in the rafters like yeah bitch he's sneaky man he takes the high ground every time he's quiet too he's quiet it's like he's waiting to see what happens like Mm -hmm. what goes down and then he makes his move (laughs) i'll go down (laughs) (laughs) i don't know we know we know (laughs) it's like the psychopath behavior which really says a lot about me he's smooth man he's smooth no he's like the fucking Oh, God. I don't even know what he's like. It's like <laughs> so my <good>. dream man. <laughs> um, yeah, so you're fine. Like, it's it's one of those where uh, Mitsuko, she finally gets what's coming to her. And right before she passes, or I guess right around when, the time that she dies, because she's another one who, like, Jason Voorhees is her dead. You know, she gets, like, gunned down by this, full again, fully automatic gun uh, by Kiriyama. And he goes to check her, and he's like, cool, she's dead. And then immediately he's like, oh! Oh, she yeah. pops up from the water Comes back up yeah and uh she shoots she gets like a couple shots off at him which if it weren't for the bulletproof vest he would be dead yeah for so sure. damn that sucks for her but so now he's uh emerged victorious and you're like okay so we just got one psychopath roaming this island that's left meanwhile the nerds have constructed a bomb in that truck and they're like sick what are we gonna do with this and before they can decide kiriyama shows up Oh, they um they hack the system, right? Yeah, they yeah. get the system down, and so they're all and all. I love how all the military guys are like freaking the fuck out. Like, oh, like my oh my god, god, what are we gonna do? Are we gotta kill in there, and kill all of them. Yeah, right. Like, get in there, Jesus. I know. <laughs> I know. Like that. I like that. Katano just goes and he basically like pulls the cord, <laughs> goes and, like, to the, the breaker, and yes, just flicks the switch. <laughs> He's like, y'all need to chill. Oh, yeah, you're doing too much, and so uh. Right yeah, or- I'm really sad for the nerds. They worked so hard on that bomb. I know. They weren't even around to enjoy it. I like the one got it off. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He's like, man, fuck this. I'm not dying without setting this bad boy off. I need to see it light. <laughs> yes. I'm going to go out in this explosion. He uh, went out like Jaws from Jaws 2. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like Kiriyama shows up, guns all these nerds down, and the final nerd standing is like, I I don't know. It, it very much reminded me of like Wolf of Wall Street when he's like, get the loads. Yeah, I will not, not die, die sober. <laughs> yeah. And he, blo- he triggers the bomb that's in that truck and it explodes and it's magnificent. So it kills um like the three nerds are definitely dead but then kiriyama still alive just badly burned and blind and like the second that bomb goes off is when uh nanahara noriko and kawada show up and they're like what happened here what the fuck (laughs) someone cooked here like it's um terrible i guess i guess honestly good timing 
Oh, yeah. Great timing. Yeah. Great timing on their part, even though it seems like a bad, like bad timing. But they see the psycho, Kiriyama, in the distance. And they kind of like, I don't know if they realize that he's blind straight away. Because they're like, everybody sh- shut the fuck up. Everybody chill. Be cool. I don't think I noticed he was blind right away until they got up close to him and his eyes were all fucked up. Well, yeah, I think that's like, you're, you're supposed to be like, oh, shit, he lived. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's blind as hell. And so Kawada starts taking some shots at him. Kiriyama shoots back. Kawada does get shot, but manages to, in an incredible scene, mm-hmm. shoot the collar on Kiriyama and explode his fucking head. Incredible. Wow. Incredible wow. cinema. Wow. 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 What a show. <laughs> wow. <laughs> beautiful exploding heads man gets me every time yeah so good so now it's literally just the three of them wasn't it the nerds who discovered that there was like a microphone i mean obviously yeah what's his name already knew that but the nerds they were like that's why they were pretending to say other things (laughs) very true on the dl he was typing in the computer yeah yeah the the nerd figures out like oh that's how they like know what's going on because they have microphones in the collars, but if you like do something, it like cuts them off. Yeah. So then they can't listen. And then we get the fake out death. Incredible stuff. We're like by the back by the water and the rocks and everything. And Kawada's like, actually, you guys, you know, I told you in the beginning of this, don't trust anybody here. Well, you t- trusted me a little too much. And he's like, I'm going to, you know, yep. This is it, man. This is the end of the road this for where, you two. This is where it all goes. So then we see him shooting off his gun, but we don't see anything else after that until he goes stomping on into the uh, original like classroom building that we were in before. Yeah. Because the teacher, like, they make an announcement like, oh, shoot, like, there's only one person left and it, it's Kawada and the military's like, let's check for bodies. Just double check and make sure. Double tap. And Katano's like, just go. Because I think on some level he, I feel like on some level he's got to know, right? Yeah. He's got to like assume. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But he basically sends all the military people home and has like a conversation with Kawada. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that is why he's, he was up to something. That's why he sent him home early. But yeah. I wonder, I wonder, I don't know. Like I've only seen this movie a few times, but that's always the way I take it. Like, but I'm also I'm also just like suspicious of him anyway, mm-hmm. you know. And then he makes and then like you said earlier, he makes that comment about like you're the one who hacked into the system. Like, uh, no, right? Mm, I don't think so. No, I mean it's a good guess, it's a good hypothesis, we'll say. But those nerds, they work so hard. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they don't get the credit they deserve. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but also too, like if he suspected this kid of being the one to hack the system because he's been here before. Why let him back in the... Why let him back? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if the system is that fragile and that easily, um, like, undone, mm-hmm. what's the point? First of all, what's the point, I then? think the... I mean, I feel like their point is similarly to the Hunger Games, like, is, it's catching fire when they bring him back in. Like, yeah. the whole, like, oh, wouldn't it be interesting if we brought in our past champions... But the only thing that doesn't make sense about that is that now he know like he already is familiar with the territory, right? So, and they like, don't change it. Yeah, and they don't change it. It made sense in Catching Fire because they were changing it up, right? New rules, new scenery. But like this, with it was the same island, same everything. Like he he had his own little hideout set up. Uh huh. Uh huh. I don't know. It's it's interesting. Don't make no damn sense to but me. But in a stunning turn of events. Both Shuya and Noriko come on, strolling on in. In fact, not dead. Very much alive. Mm -hmm. And I like that at this point, and like, Kitano, instead of being like, you double-crossed me, he was like, perfect. I now have an audience of three to show this beautiful painting that I've done and unveils his art, which is just (laughs) a mural of all the students and the gruesome ways they've died. And, like, it depicts Noriko as like the victor Mm -hmm. and he's like man i was rooting for you yeah yeah if it if if i really could pick anyone for it to be it would have been you and she pulls a gun out on him and he's like it's okay you could shoot me and she's like 
I will. And he's like, no, go ahead. And she's like, I, I, I will. Don't come any closer. And he's like, it's all good, man. Like, you can do it or I'll shoot you. And he pulls out a gun. And I think Nanahara is just like, fuck it. Yeah. And shoots Kitano. And um, Kitano, he's like, uh, oh, shoot. Like, you got me. And squirts his gun, which ends up just being a water gun. It was like a total fake out. But then I love it because the amount of times that they shoot him, again, with, like, an automatic weapon, he would have been dead. But yeah. instead, his cell phone rings, and he gets up and walks over to the couch mm-hmm. to take a quick phone call. <laughs> yeah. Again, comical. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, hello, daughter? I'm not uh, coming fuck home. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. And then he shoots the phone, eats a cookie that Noriko had made, and I dies. believe, for Nobu. Yeah. And then dies. Mm-hmm. And so you're like, wow, they really did the damn thing. And the three make like Steamboat Willie and get on a boat. And uh, Kawada's like, yeah, second start to the right straight on till morning kind of thing. You know, you'll you'll hit land if you just go that way. <laughs> and then he dies after smoking a cigarette. Bummer, but it's, man. But it's like so sweet, too, because he's like, oh, it, it was like cool to make friends, like real the, friends. The friends we murdered along the way. <laughs> I know. It's like a very Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> and so the movie basically ends with um, Nanahara voicing over the fact that Noriko, uh, like they left the island. Noriko went home um, to say like a quiet goodbye to her parents who were sleeping. She grabbed the butterfly knife that was used to kill or to stab um, Kitano and they basically just like are now fugitives on the run yeah and we see like a little wanted ad for them that they're wanted for aiding and abetting a murderer and also like murder is this not filmed for tv entertainment purposes right <laughs> when they are when people already know right the truth i guess not i don't know that's where editing comes in <laughs> well, mm-hmm yeah. Don't believe anything. <laughs> I know, right? The magic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is just like the strangest feeling on this movie because it was so badass. It was so dark, yet funny at times. <laughs> yeah, like it's I'm, all over the place. I <laughs> laughed and I cried. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's all over. I know. Especially like toward the end when we do get like a flashback of like all the students at a basketball game and like... Mm-hmm. Just, like, the camaraderie among students. And even, like, uh, Mitsuko was the outcast, was, like, excited when the basketball team won. And now, like, they're all dead. And yeah, it's just so sad. But it, like, it had its funny moments also. Like, yeah. I don't know. It, it just, I, I don't know if that's what gives this movie heart or what. But mm-hmm. I really enjoyed the movie. Yeah, I did too. What uh, What is your rating for Battle Royale? Oh god. Um I think I'm going to give it a uh, Let's go four and a half out of 5. A. Hey. All right. It's a good score. Yeah. I am chickening out and I'm not going to give it a 5 star. I'm going to give it a 4.75 out of 5. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like it doesn't feel right. Maybe because like I myself am just like slightly confused. Oh, okay. By, like, so, like just small details? Yeah. It really shouldn't matter? I mean, I, I was, too. You know what? This no. This was my first time watch, so, I'm, like, I don't know. I'm going to give it a five out of five. I'm go- I'm going to do it. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to go for it. I actually kind of wish that we had gotten more. Maybe it's just because I saw, obviously, like, Hunger Games first and all that. And so yeah. I'm used to the backstory. I kind of, like, wanted more yeah. backstory, like, a little bit. I, I get that it was, like, you know, um... You know, like, they just threw these kids in. And, you know, there's 40 of them. So, like, a majority of the movie has to be, like, them killing, you know? Yeah. But I feel like I would have liked to see a little bit more of, like, the process. Especially because this did come before Hunger Games. So, I think it would have been cool to see, you know, other than that, like, brief clip in the beginning with the little girl that survives the other one. Yeah. There is a sequel to this. Have you seen it? Nope. Oh. (laughs) Okay. nope so i'm just putting that out there in case someone's gonna be like there's a sequel that explain you know kind of like yeah. the purge and the purge yeah right, exactly. <laughs> um but full yeah full disclosure i have not seen the second one the sequel to battle royale is also on tubi so i'll probably be watching that shortly um like in, in the near future just to say i've seen it um and the sequel was directed by the 
director of Battle Royale's son because shortly after starting to film Battle Royale 2, the director of Battle Royale passed away. That's sad. Yeah. So his son took over the project. Wow. And I believe the movie is dedicated to the director. Oh. Yeah. At least you got to see his own creation. Yeah. Come full circle. Crazy that it was so soon after. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's wild. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. 2003 is when the second one came out. Yeah. That one's even longer. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's like two hours, 12 minutes or something like that. Two hours, 35. 235. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what? Something must be missing on Tubi then, because I think Tubi told me two hours, 12 minutes. And I said, I got time. And then I was like, I don't really got time. <laughs> it's only an extra whatever minutes. So that, oh, that's crazy. That is wild. I'm curious to know. Like, I, I got to, I'll watch the, uh, to see what the, the sequel. If yeah. there is like a backstory in there. Just to, I just, yeah, just to see what it's all about. Yeah. But anyway, these are just our opinions on Battle Royale from 2000. Please let us know what you guys think of this fantastically, comically dark, gory, <laughs> gory movie. And we hope that you join us for the rest of J-Horror all month long. We are very excited. Hit us up on Discord so we can chat about the movie after. Um, you guys know where all of our socials are at. If not and you are new here, we are on pretty much all forms of social media at Fred Mike Podcast. And if you wouldn't mind taking the time to give us a little five-star review, a nice little comment anywhere you can rate and review it just helps boost our little show and get us out there to more fright fans like yourself but until next time i'm sam i'm liz rest Rest in in peace. peace